Welcome to a new episode of me buying faulty consoles or items on eBay, trying to fix them up and then sell them for a profit. For the last five weeks, we have managed to make a profit in this series. Can we continue that luck with today's faulty item? We have ourselves another faulty PlayStation 5 that I purchased for a grand total of £200. The issue with this one is supposedly you push the power button and you get three beeps of death according to the eBay seller. Let's get this open and see if that is the case. It is in fact a digital version and to be 100% honest with you, it looks really clean. It's in, uh, it's in great condition. Now, typically these will go for less money because you can't put a disc inside this console. It doesn't have a disc drive. Ports on the back all seem to be a-okay. I'm gonna plug the power in now and see if we get any life from this console because you never know. Go ahead and plug in the power cable. Any bangs or booms? No, but I did hear a crackle. Okay, I just got three three beeps, beep, beep, beep. I'm gonna push the button and see if we can replicate those three beeps. And now I don't seem to get anything. So if I take out the power lead, give it a couple of seconds and put the power lead back in, do I get the same three beeps? Yeah, okay, so it's when you put the power lead in. I don't think I've ever had this fault personally. I think it's time to get this open and uh, and see what's going on. But before I do that, a quick message from today's sponsor, PCB Way. PCB Way are PCB specialists. From creating your own personal PCB, various sizes, different colors, and complete customization to sharing a project that you've created, PCB Way has it all. Leave comments on other people's projects or even download the Gerber files left by the author to give it a go yourself. They also have a gift store where you can purchase merchandise, soldering irons, multimeters, and lots, lots more. Check out the link in the description for a $5 welcome bonus. We have scratches, but that's where somebody has vigorously taken the top casing off. To be honest, it might not have even been opened before. What, I did not expect that with this console. Yeah, I think that's a genuine warranty sticker still. Let me just see if all the screws and stuff are intact, which they are. So I don't know if somebody's taken this apart because of the scratches that we have on the top casing, but then just gone, nah, I'm just gonna leave it there. It's just started raining here, and do you know what? If I'm being 100% honest, there's something really therapeutic about fixing consoles when I can hear rain outside. Maybe I'm just a bit weird like that. Top chassis plastic is off, and now we have 64,397 screws. Initial thoughts looking at this, it looks absolutely fine. I've obviously disconnected all the wires that I can. I can't see any dust, dirt, I mean, there's tiny bits of dust down here, so we'll need like a cooling system service or something, but uh, yeah, everything looks okay from what I can see. First things first, let's plug in again power and measure, there we go, that's a beep again. I'm just gonna measure for uh, 12 volts. Uh, yes, we do, we do get 12 volts. So our power supply should be quote unquote fine. I'm gonna take the board out and continue inspecting. I'm actually going to be interested to see what the liquid metal is like, uh, cause I could be wrong. I thought that the uh, maybe three beeps was like a sign of overheating, but the console's not even getting a chance to overheat unless the liquid metal is literally non-existent. But even then I still think you'd get maybe 10 seconds of something. Is anything jumping out at me straight away? Not necessarily there's no big explosions on the board from what i can tell there is a slight bit of dryness on the apu where you don't have complete coverage of the liquid metal but that's not going to cause our issue just inspecting inside the usb ports and the hdmi port and they all look fine so that's okay so now i can conduct my basic test with a multimeter to see if i can spot anything abnormal with the board let's head on over to the microscope okay what do we have meter in continuity mode where are thou fuses really quickly do we have a continuous path yep is in fact the first revision of the board, EDM010. Just quickly gonna check around the Wi-Fi IC, see if we have any shorts here. No shorts on the Wi-Fi IC from what I can tell. This is the disc edition fuses and circuit, I'm pretty sure, so there's not gonna be anything there. So that's normal, F7003, all good. F7001, all good. F7502, all good. F3501, all good. F7501, all good. Now. I play a game of going around the board and just checking random caps for shorts. I tested pretty much all of the caps. I couldn't find a single capacitor that was shorted where it shouldn't be. I checked the readings on the Southbridge IC as well as the back of the SSD controller and uh, they seem to be absolutely fine in comparison with another board. I'm not gonna take you through every single component because you will get board. So my next step is to actually hook up to my power supply because we don't have a short on the 12 volt rail and just see what happens with the amp draw. Okay so the amp draw is on a maximum of 5 amps and we're injecting 12 volts so I'm just going to push the power button and I'm going to inject in 3, 2, 1. Okay okay so we have the three beeps and it just holds at 10 milliamps so it doesn't even attempt to boot. A normal boot sequence would be straight up to around about 300 
milliamps, which it doesn't even do, and it holds for a couple of seconds, then drops back down to around about 10. So I don't even think this is attempting to boot. And I think if we had an issue with the SSD controller IC or the South Bridge, it would attempt to boot, or at least show more current draw than 10 milliamps. For that reason alone, the only shot in the dark that I could potentially take here in my brain would be the BIOS chip. And because this is a digital board, I'm pretty sure I can just take a BIOS chip from a donor board and plop it, plop it? Can I use that word? I think so. And plop it onto this board. I guess at that point, just to see if it turns on, right? The BIOS chip is located here, right next to the South Bridge. This chip will most likely have issues internally rather than show anything on the circuit, if that makes sense. I think anyway. A slight issue here actually that has just come to light is that I don't have any other digital PlayStation 5 boards and I need the BIOS to be from a digital board. I don't think I can take it from a disk drive board because if I do that, I don't know if it's gonna work. So I need to get a chip ordered so I can test that theory. But before I do, I think I might just take it from a disk drive and put it on and see what happens and see if we get some sort of boot sequence. It might be that the console turns on but it doesn't update or anything along those lines. I don't know what errors are gonna occur. So for the sake of science, I'm gonna do that. Now this doesn't really give me the best opportunity to showcase a new tip. This is a new tip that I have for my Hakko soldering station, recommended by Wayne from Get Refurbed. It's a T15 BCM2. Remember I said I was having a struggle tinning HDMI ports, etc., on specifically on the actual pins themselves. I'm hoping this is gonna change that, but we will give it a test. It has like a hole. Can you see the hole at the end of the tip where it like solder sits in? So that in itself is pretty cool. Now I'm gonna add some leaded solder to these chips because sometimes they can really struggle to actually come off the board. So I'm just gonna add some leaded solder to the pins. So I guess I can use my iron for that. Let me get that sorted quickly. There we are, new chip installed. This again is from a, um, a disc edition board, so I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but I wanted to see if there was a change in the boot sequence at least. Let's go back over to the power supply and just see if we get a different startup. Okay, 12 volts inject, three, two, one. No beep. Yeah, there we go. That looks like a better beep boot sequence. Beep boot sequence, up to 300 milliamp hours. We'll do it again, up to 300 milliamps, and then down to around about nine or 10. Nice. For the sake of testing, I'll put the fan back together and just put bare basics just to see if we get a display and see what happens on the interface now that we have a disc of BIOS on a digital board. I've got my monitor ready to go because I can't put it on the Elgato game capture just yet, but what happens? Here we go. Three, two, one. Yes. Beep. Fan spin. Let's stay on. Does that go to a white light? We have a white light. Okay. Changing our display. For some reason I have to go to HDMI 1 for it to go to HDMI 2, don't ask. Do we get an image? Oh, has gone back to a blue light, okay. Three beeps. It's gone back to a white light, let's try that again. Yes, here we go. All right, nice, your PS5 wasn't turned off properly, but it powers on, and by the looks of it, it works. I'll go into the main menu now and see if I can get it to work on the Elgato. All right, here we go, we are in. There was a couple of accounts on this because I'm assuming what's happened is they were playing it and then it just decided to break. So what's interesting to see is that we have all of the data from the previous owner even though it's a different BIOS chip. One of the things I wanted to check was if we could perform a system update because if we can update the console with the BIOS chip from a disk one then I don't see why we couldn't just use a disk BIOS because I feel like the update part of it is probably the only thing that's going to brick it. So we go software uh, Oh, I need to reset the console because I'm not the host. I'm not the main account. So we go for the reset anyway and see what happens. So this is quite interesting. I'm just having to switch back and forth because again, I because I, I've reset the console, I can't record on the uh, Elgato just yet. But it's asking to insert a game disc, even though this is a digital console, obviously because of the BIOS swap, it's saying please insert a disc. So I wonder what happens when we go to update. Okay, so update system software, right. So update the software to get the most of your PS5, continue. Yep, let's see 
what happens? It downloads the update, that's pretty much done. Is it going to install is the question, so it's preparing to install. I don't know what percentage of it does, it looks for the disk drive. Okay, it is installing. Let's see how far this gets. Okay, it got to 100%, it's now restarting. Does it take us to a main menu? System software update. So it's back on the update screen. Is this where it's going to throw a hissy fit? Something went wrong, okay. And the console has crashed, you can see that the background is now frozen, so these little bits aren't floating about, and I can't press OK on the controller. So now I'm gonna have to restart the console and just see what happens. Does it just go back to the update screen if you turn it off and on, let's find out. I, in a way, I'm very glad that it's done this because it's almost peace of mind that nothing's gonna happen going forward if I uh, if I go ahead and put a digital BIOS on rather than the disk one. Okay, yeah, can't complete the update. So it tried to update again, but it's saying it can't complete it because obviously this is the disk version and not digital. But that's really, really interesting and good to know. I think there has been people who've done this, obviously. I think Phil was one of them, but it's the first on the JDT channel, so it's, it's good to experiment with these things. All that's left for me to do now is get a working digital BIOS chip, which, you know, is gonna take me a couple of days, but you guys are gonna see it now. Install it on the console and then just give it a quick test and make sure that we're all good. Let's do that now. And just like that, we're back. And yeah, I may have shaved my hair a little bit and I've put on some new gloves. Look how clean and shiny these are. I give it probably about two or three episodes before they are back to the same color as my other gloves. This is our little tool that we're gonna to be using and this is what I've been waiting for to arrive in the post. Now I'm not gonna go through the whole tutorial of how to do this. You can find that on the Codus channel. I'll leave a link to the video down below in the description. It's a great video and it's extremely in depth. So that's why I'd recommend going to watch that rather than me talk you through all of this stuff. I'm basically just gonna take the BIOS from the console. I'm gonna put it into this little programmer and make it digital. Cue the montage. Is our IC all soldered nicely? I've ensured that we've got some strong legs here as well. Um, I'm gonna test it and see if it works. Wish me luck. Here we go, does that actually turn on? I've got the fan in, let's see. Yeah, we get a beep, we get fan spin, good. So that's two out of two so far. Do we get a white light? Yes, we do, there we go. And do we get anything on the screen? There we go, okay. PlayStation logo, nice. So we haven't completely bricked it yet. Okay, this might be like a really early bars or something. Welcome to PlayStation 5. There we go, okay. Let's see if this thing updates, because that's where we were failing before, right? Update available from internet. This part was fine last time. We managed to download the Gigabyte update and then it installed it, but failed after that. So we need to make sure that the update actually installs here, which will be about as far as what we got last time. Restarting, good. And here we go, I think this is where it messed up last time. It said, unable to complete the update. Okay, so we're installing now. I don't think it got this far last time. Went to 100%, it's just restarting, I think. Yeah, it turned off, it's just come back on. Do we get a, a white light? White light there. Display. Okay, let's sign in quickly. All right, there we go. So, I have logged in to my PlayStation account. I've downloaded Spider-Man. Everything seems to be fine. All USB ports on the device seem to be working. I can't play Spider-Man because I have the disc on PS4, and this is a discless, version, but I upgraded it to remaster, which is why I can download the game, but I can't play it because I don't have the disc, so I'm gonna have to download and play some Rocket League. I've never really been that good at Rocket League, but I will try and score a goal for you guys, for the JDT community. Oh, yes. Go, go my son. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah! Clearly the PS5 is working as it should be. It's now time to head over to Sally's Spectacular Spreadsheet to see what the profit is. Now I know profit isn't gonna be anything too crazy here, but a profit is a profit. So I purchased the console for 200 pounds. Looking at the prices of PlayStations at the moment, I believe a lot of stores are actually offering discount on brand new PlayStations, which kind of affects the second hand price of them. In which case I'm gonna list the console for 290 pounds. I think I'd be able to get that because it's in great condition. That leaves us with a total gross profit in today's video of 69 pounds and 99 pence. If we update this tab, 69.99, brings our total to 745 pounds and 53 pence, edging just that little bit closer to a thousand pounds profit. Today, I'll leave a link to the whole playlist of this series. You can start from episode one just here. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.